we have derived we derived this formula correct now let's say i take hydrogen atom and i study the wavelength emitted from 2 to 1 matlab this is 2 this is 1 and i take deuterium atom deuterium for deuterium i can apply or not bohr's model yes sir one electron one electron atom i can apply from 2 to 1 the wavelength emitted from here and the wavelength emitted from here should be equal according to this formula yes or no 2 to 1 so 2 1 2 1 in both case z is how much for hydrogen 1 for deuterium 1 1 so it should be same or not but when experimentally it was studied they found this wavelengths have a very small difference it may be very small but it is measurable and the day it was measured the person who measured got nobel prize for chemistry now let us think why it is coming different the reason why it is coming different students is because we have assumed the nucleus to be at rest yes or no yes sir so the nucleus mass did not affect this problem whether you do this or you do this but nuclear mass is actually not infinite it is finite so you have to now consider the finite mass of nucleus also then you will be able to realize that this wavelength will depend on not only the mass of electron if you remember i told you mass of electron is in the numerator is in the numerator of lindberg constant but you will realize that it will depend on the mass of the nucleus also now look here if your nuclear mass is infinity if your nuclear mass is infinity then your nucleus is at rest and electron goes around this circle with some radius and some energy radius is given by the formula a not n square by z the value of this a not will come around 0.53 angstrom it is also called bohr's radius then energy we got minus 13.6 z square by n square e and 1 by lambda we got some formula r z square 1 by n1 square minus 1 by n2 square now when you consider the nuclear mass to be finite then no you cannot say nucleus is at rest so then what will happen nucleus will rotate around its center of mass and electron will also rotate around its around their center of mass so this is the center of mass of nucleus and electron obviously it will be very close to nucleus so nucleus also will move in a circle with some radius r1 r r nucleus and electron will go in r electron okay so this is called two body problem such kind of problems is very difficult to analyze theoretically so what we do we reduce this two body problem we reduce this two body problem into one body problem so we make this system this system okay we assume the nucleus is again at rest and electron is revolving around the nucleus but the mass of this electron cannot be taken same as this electron's mass so this is called reduced mass reduced mass so that will be equal to m1 m2 by m1 plus m2 so that is called your reduced mass which in this case will be mass of electron mass of nucleus mass of electron plus mass of nucleus now you can see students that generally nucleus is very heavy 
So mass of electron plus mass of nucleus, you can simply write mass of nucleus. So mass of nucleus will cancel. So reduced mass will be mass of electron usually. But in problems where they will mention the mass of nucleus, that time you don't have to do any change. Wherever there is Me in this formula, you have to reduce it by Mr. And it will be less. This mass will be less because this formula is similar to resistors in parallel or not? R1, R2 by R1 plus R2. Yes, sir. And in parallel, the resistance is always reduced. So this is reduced mass. So using the reduced mass, we can calculate the radius of this orbit. We can calculate energy of this orbit, the wavelength which is emitted when electron goes from N1 to N2. We can calculate here also using this formula, but slight change we have to do. So let us see what change we have to do. So when nuclear mass is finite, what changes will come? First, radius has mass in the numerator or denominator. Quickly tell me. Denominator. Denominator. So radius has mass of electron in the denominator. Now I'll write here old. Old matlab, the one which we have derived before by assuming nucleus to be at rest. Now the radius will be proportional to the reduced mass. This is the reduced mass. So I can write R divided by R old is equals to M reduced M electron. So R will be equal to R old M electron by M reduced into R old. And R nth orbit, if I want, mass of electron, mass of reduced into, and R old we know, R old is A naught n squared by z. So this is the formula that you have to use to find the radius in any orbit. Reduced mass, we have to first calculate. That is easy because they will give you the mass of nucleus. This is how radius will be affected. Okay, number two. How energy will be affected? Now, first you tell me. Energy has mass in the numerator. So energy old has mass in the numerator. So the new energy will be proportional to reduced mass. So you have to replace this mass by this mass. So energy by energy old will be equal to mass reduced by mass of electron. So energy will be mass reduced by mass of electron E old. And E old, nth orbit if I want, or nth state will be reduced mass by mass of electron and this energy we know already minus 13.6 z square by n square e. Then the last one is for wavelength. Well, wavelength you can tell directly because if energy is affected this way, frequency will be affected same way. So wavelength will be reciprocally affected. But I want one by lambda. So one by lambda will be affected the same way as frequency. So what was the formula? R z square 1 by n1 square minus 1 by n2 square. Now directly I will do. This R has, if you remember, mass in the numerator. Mass in the numerator. So this will be for new one we are doing. So mass reduced. Let me write nicely mass reduced by mass of electron R z square 1 by n1 square minus 1 by n2 square. So let us solve the next question now. Question number 9 you see. So question number 9. <clears throat> see carefully, listen carefully. The emission series of hydrogen atom is given by 1 by lambda equal to R1 by N1 square minus 1 by N2 square. Now, for a transition from N2 to N1, the relative <coughs> change delta lambda by lambda in the emission wavelength if hydrogen is replaced by deuterium. 
mass assume that mass of proton and neutron are same and they are 2000 times larger than mass of electron so mass of proton and mass of neutron are same and both are 2000 times mass of electron so this is mentioned in the question so first let us do for hydrogen so in hydrogen what will be mass of nucleus mass of proton yes or no so mass of proton means what will be the it will be 2000 times mass of electron so what will be reduced because i need to find reduced mass so reduced mass was formula was me into mn matlab 2000 me divided by me plus mn 2000 m that will be 2000 divided by 2001 me so that is the reduced mass of hydrogen similarly for deuterium deuterium you do for deuterium what will be mass of nucleus two times mass of proton actually i should write mass of proton plus mass of neutron but they told neutron and proton have same mass so two times so that will be 4000 m so what will be reduced mass let me write what should I do for hydrogen? I want to write one. Let me say bracket one. Let me write bracket two. So, what will be reduced mass 4000 directly? You can write 4000 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 1. 4001 directly. Directly, okay. Same thing, okay. Now, you see this n1 z is same, z is same for both of them. One, one. Rydberg constant is obviously same for both of them. And N1, N2 is also same for both of them. Because they told for which wavelength, from 2 to 1. For both of them, they are calculating the relative change in the wavelength, from transition, which is due to transition from 2 to 1. So when electron falls from 2 to 1, the wavelength emitted in hydrogen and deuterium, the relative change we have to calculate. So for the first one, 1 by lambda 1 will be equal to, this is same remember, so only this will be different. So, mr1 divided by me, something which we let me write as c. So, this whole so thing will be like this one like that. And 1 by lambda 2, huh, I understood, but for others also I have to explain now. Mass of reduced 2 will be me into c. Right, so this is for hydrogen, this is for deuterium. So if I divide this by this or this by this, doesn't matter, two by lambda one. So I'm dividing this by this. So I'll get MR1 divided by MR2. Okay, so lambda two by lambda one will be MR1. This is 2000. Me by 2001 into 4000 Me 4001 2. So this will be 4001 divided by 4002. Okay, now relative change. Now they told in the question very clearly they are replacing hydrogen by deuterium. That means hydrogen is initial. Deuterium is final. So I should calculate lambda 2 minus lambda 1 by lambda 1. Everybody understood or not? We have to calculate this according to the question. Final wavelength minus initial wavelength by initial wavelength into 100. Because they want in percentage. So that will be equal to. Now this I can write lambda 2 by lambda 1 minus 1 into 100. So 4001 minus 1, 4002 into 100. So the percentage change will be, this will be how much? 1 divided by 
4002 into 100%. This I can write approximately, approximately 1 by 40, I can write. No. 0 0.025. Correct, students? Check once. And I should get minus. Check one. Yes, sir. Okay. Minus means what? When you go from hydrogen to deuterium, the wavelength has decreased. It has to decrease because lambda 2 should be smaller than lambda 1. But in that, that's why if it, since it is KVPY, I was expecting you no know, minus sign also will be there. They will keep two options with minus sign and plus sign. But since minus sign is not there, this one we have to tick. So you can see it is a very small percentage change, very small, but it is measurable. Today's spectroscopy can measure this much difference also. So from there, it is very clear that we cannot always assume nucleus to be at rest.